Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. And in today's video, guys, I want to ask you a question. Did you guys ever wish you had some sort of time capsule that could take you back to a certain significant time in history of your country that would show you what these people were like at the time? How they left, what they were worried about, what their hopes and dreams were. I'm sure that no matter what country you're from, there might be a historical time in your country's history which you would like to go back and see what people's lives looked like at that time and what they thought. Well, guys, in today's video, we're going to be looking at something very very interesting because i have in my hands well not in my hands on the computer a huge huge time capsule which will take us to the fall of the soviet union Budka glasnosti which translates to something like the booth of free speech was a tv show in russia that started running in 1991 and proceeded to run for pretty much the first half of the 90s and it was a show the whole idea of which was that the soviet union is now dead we have freedom of speech and we want to give the voice to the ex-soviet people the producers of the show installed the booth with cameras inside on the main squares of several cities across the ex-Soviet Union, including Russia, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and Moldova. The people who lived under an authoritarian regime for several decades now got the ability to go inside this booth and say pretty much anything, which later was cut up and turned into a whole TV show of people just speaking their minds. And having already watched this, I have to say this is some of the most fascinating stuff I've ever seen in my life, because we get to see what the people of Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Moldova thought in the early 90s after the Soviet Union fell, and we can also see their hopes for peace and unity, which in the context of current events only makes this even more sad to watch. So let's strap in and check out The Booth of Glasnost, one of the most entertaining TV shows I've ever seen in my life. And I think the first episode I want to look at is the one that was filmed in Odessa, Ukraine in 1991, basically right after the fall of the Soviet Union. Odessa! Hmm? Odessa! Can I start already? Odessa is... Красивый город и много Все народ! Все народ! Кроме того, я хотел поздравлять все народа За что? День Рождества? Нет! Рождества и Новый год! Бро, эти ребята должны быть high as fuck I love it, you know, international students in Ukraine trying to remember how to say, you know, Merry Christmas in Russian. Wholesome, it's very wholesome. Yeah, man, it's just so wholesome. It's crazy to see. It's crazy to me to imagine that this was 30 years ago. And these young guys that I'm looking at are probably like fathers in Ukraine right now. I hope they're doing okay, man. This next guy, though, he's about to spit some bars. Привет всем, Одессе, Украине, России, всему Союзу. Notice, I like, I like this as well. You will notice this in a lot of people's speeches. The Soviet Union just fell apart in this, right? And these people still like are deeply Soviet. So it's funny that this guy says shout outs to Ukraine, Russia and the entirety of the Union. Which kind of shows that, you know, people still haven't really understood what happened because even though Ukraine and Russia are already separate sovereign countries in this, some people still think of both of them at this point as part of a union. Kravchuk, Yeltsin, поделили власть. Флотом, Крым, делят это. Паны дерутся, холопы. Не верьте им. Барс. Живите и не верьте ни одному коммуняке никакой власти. Ну, короче, у меня сейчас, я просто ворвался сюда. Будьте здоровы и не верьте никакой падле, которая сидит у власти. Все. Dude, it's as if this guy knew something. And you can see these were present issues at the time as well, you know. The debate of Crimea has already existed in 1991, and he's saying, you know, essentially that the politicians should not divide the people and everything. I can just see that he's a good guy, just from this scene, you know. And overall, that's my whole point with this. Why watching this stuff is, like, so crazy is because everybody just feels so, like, wholesome and naive and so nice. I'm like, damn, these people are so innocent. It's insane. <laughs> Всех благ. С Новым годом. <laughs> That's it. We're gonna look at this more, but let's switch up and actually look at other countries. Let's check out what Russians were saying. This one right here is actually from 1993, so related to the referendum. Now, if you guys are not aware of the historical context, you should watch my video that I made called The Day Russian Democracy Died. I talked so exactly about the Russian constitutional crisis in 1993 and how, in my opinion, Russian democracy died in 1993. And this is basically in the midst of that entire crisis and people discussing the uh, presidential and parliamentary referendum that was about to take place. Again, a very interesting time capsule. Ну, во-первых, Ельцин музей. 
Во-вторых, Наутилус это... Окей. Fair. Во-вторых, Наутилус это сила. Но больше сказать нечего. Весна, девушки, где вы? Бро, this is insane. This is so crazy. Люди, вы голосовали? Голосуйте за Ельцина, будем жить. Все. It's so insane to me just looking at this guy and looking at how much like he resembles my friends or anybody from my generation even though this dude is like old enough to be my dad. This was shot in 1993 and this is just a young guy who's like excited about the future democracy of Russia or whatever you know voting for Yeltsin. It's just crazy to me man. It's just crazy to me how I just thought about thinking how politicians use people and stuff and how so many people's hopes and dreams you know go and turn into nothing like I'm sorry for turning this reaction video into an existential crisis but that's kind of what's going on right now in my head you know. <laughs> Жизнь стала веселее. Я вообще за мир. Вообще работать надо до граждане. Меньше проблем будет. Да. Подлежащий камень вода не течет. Работайте и все будет хорошо. Ну и все. Спасибо. До свидания, спасибо. Bro, what the f it's insane. These dudes, I'm sorry, first of all, they look like they came out of 2022. They're way too, like, self-aware and ironic for 1993, you know? Just their whole demeanor, like, feels like these motherfuckers came from 2022. These motherfuckers are time travelers, I'm telling you, this is wild. Мужики, водка есть, закуска есть, Ельцина не скидываем, пьем, гуляем, голова на плечах, не для того, чтобы шапку носить, а нужно деньги зарабатывать. Все. This is exactly what I was saying in my Russian democracy video. Yeltsin was popular, really popular in Russia at one point, you know? Терпеть не могу Ельцина, потому что все делает против народа. Это такой, который довел страну просто-напросто до безумия. Больше просто не могу ничего сказать, потому что нет слов. Спасибо. First of all, based, and second of all, this is the freedom of speech they had in Russia, okay? Because this was shot in Russia in 1993. You could literally go out in a booth and say that you hate Yeltsin and that he's a terrible idiot. And not only would you not be jailed for that, your little interview, your opinion would be edited and aired on live TV on the first channel of Russia. That is absolutely insane to me. It's just so crazy to me how the difference between the freedom of speech Russia had in the 90s and the freedom of speech Russia has now is insane. And it just kind of makes me sad that I have to be a young adult in these times of, you know, insane political persecution and censorship. I want the time machine to 1993 take me there right now. I will make it right. I will save Russia from demise. <laughs> Just one chance, please. Oh my god. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Alright, let's switch once again and check out what people in Kazakhstan were saying. So this episode was shot in Almata, one of the biggest uh, cities in Kazakhstan in 1993. <laughs> Да, во всем регионе. Все нормально, да, Казахстан хороший. И, значит, хотим, чтобы везде по союзу было то же самое. Примерно одинаково, да. как у нас. There you go. Once again, he also says, I wish everywhere in the union it would be the same, like, decent as we have it, you know? And, of course, once again, the guy is saying that, you know, they hope for peace and prosperity and everything. This is full, this is sus, this is, this is sad. This is just sad. The implications and, like, of what the ex-Soviet Union turned into, you know? With Russia, obviously, at the forefront of belligerence it makes me very sad цены правда кусаются все кусается но ничего переживем главное всем жить друга мира и здоровья всем президентам всем республикам again he says all republics republics of the soviet union it's it's crazy to me man надоело нам уже все это вы понимаете нам молодым совершенно нет никакого стимула к жизни никакого определенного будущего и вообще same i agree <laughs> you can clearly tell that these girls are very not, you know, big fans of uh, Gorbachev's reforms and overall the fall of the Soviet Union because you can tell from them shitting on Gorbachev, that's what's going on here. Here's another one. This was shot in uh, Chisinau, the capital of Moldova as well in 1991. <laughs> Молодые друг другу съездят гости, а не так там. This is sad. 
This is just sad. I mean, it's also wholesome, but it's sad. Dude, I largely consider myself to be not a big fan of the Soviet Union, right? Why am I watching these videos and I'm getting fucking nostalgic for the Soviet Union now? Why is everybody speaking so positively of it? <laughs> We've been fed Western propaganda to believe the Soviet Union suck, guys. It actually was the best country in the world. I actually don't think that, but uh, still, you know, like, like, that's just the way these videos make you feel. Good morning. I to say that's what I like about this as well is that through the, you know reacting to these people speaking you can see like what their struggles were at the time you know a lot of people mentioned how they're struggling with finances you know putting the food on the table because that was largely the situation in the ex-Soviet Union at that time in the early 90s terrible inflation you know the economy was awful in every single country of the ex-Soviet Union pretty much and yeah the people were really struggling and you know to make ends meet and you know people are voicing their struggles in this in these videos and from a historical point of view this is amazing yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> well, not to not being able to buy bread, say thankfully I can do that, but about the overall uh, relationship between the governments and uh, the people. I feel that way as well, you know, I feel like <laughs> we are here to die pretty much at this point. And it's just wild how, you know, it shows me, you know, looking at these videos, how people from different republics at that time, there was no animosity between Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Moldova. There's not many more in this series or anything, but you can clearly tell that people still felt some sort of unity at that time. And unfortunately, instead of creating some sort of new space on the territory of the ex-Soviet Union in which countries could maybe trade freely with each other and travel freely with each other, you know, like a second European Union or something, you know, like some sort of economic union that would just be great for everybody. Instead, the post Soviet Union has plunged into a series of wars and conflicts and just hatred, just hatred of each other. And obviously there's real reasons for that. And a lot of the times Russia is involved in it and is, you know, the whole reason why these things happen. But it just makes me sad that it had to turn out this way. And I'm not saying we should have brought the Soviet Union back or anything, but it would be so much better if there was cooperation, freedom of movements, freedom of speech now. But instead, we just live in a worse timeline. <laughs> Долгой жизни дали всему миру. Самое главное, чтобы детей, дети дерутся. Посмотрите, что творится в мире. Ой, самое главное, чтобы дали детям, детям дружные, чтобы все были. Драки, шумы, Бог знает, что творится на белом свете. Господи, дай Господи, самое главное, жизни, жизни детям. Bro, I think I'm gonna cry right now. <laughs> Why is every one of these so sad in retrospect? I can't watch this. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, this is from Ukraine as well. And they're saying, you know, let's drink to the happiness of the Russian people. We have severely fucked up everything, man. I, I cannot I cannot put it any other way. This is crazy. Yeah, what can I say, man? I mean, this video was fun to make. It's fun to react to these people. You know, everybody's such a character in these. It's crazy. But this just makes me sad in, in multiple ways, you know? First of all, it makes me sad about how much how much we all fucked up the uh, relationship between uh, the people from the ex-Soviet Union and how a lot of people from the ex-Soviet Union just hate each other these days and there's all these conflicts and everything. It just makes me fucking sad. And also the free speech, you know? Just especially that clip with the guys hating on, you know, the president Yeltsin on live TV in this TV show that was aired on the first channel of Russia, okay? It just makes me kind of sad and puts in perspective how much of a restrictive country Russia has become over the years that people are friends to say the littlest thing about the leader or about the government, you know, because that's the times we're at right now, you know? You're risking a huge prison sentence, basically, any time you sort of, you know, say anything that doesn't go in line with the, you know, the, the ruling party. Whereas in 1993, just two years after the fall of the Soviet Union, you could say whatever on TV, pretty much. It just makes me hope that maybe somewhere in the future there will be once again a time where uh, we, people of the different nations, that once have been in the Soviet Union, you know, 30 years ago, that we will be able to come together. Once again, I'm not meaning not come together as a part of a new Soviet Union. Definitely not. Everybody should be sovereign in their rightful borders, right? I mean, come together in the sense of, like, solidarity. And uh, I wish people wouldn't fucking hate each other, man. I know this sounds naive and childish, but that's just really what I fucking want for the world and for, you know, Russia, Ukraine and everything. And hopefully, once again, there will be a time in Russia where uh, some TV studio will be able to put a booth in the middle 
middle of the uh, center of Moscow, and anybody would be able to go in there and say whatever and voice his opinion, and really be free in their speech and not be scared of, you know, getting locked up in prison forever. And, you know, honestly, it feels like there is a demand for it because look at this, like on YouTube, I just saw this video called What People Want to Say Today, Glasnost Booth 2022, and this video has almost 500k. And it's just a guy like interviewing people outside on the streets in Russia these days. And it's called The Booth of Glasnost 2022. So, yeah, there is a dire need for a new booth of free speech in Russia these days. And uh, hopefully, hopefully one day we will get to that point and uh, we will finally vent everything that we've been keeping on the down low for so many years and been too scared to say. Anyways, guys, yeah, I guess this is gonna be pretty much it for today's video. Though, if you guys did enjoy it, please make sure to slap the like on it. As well, guys, if you want to support my channel, if you want to support me additionally, then you can go to the link down in the description, become a YouTube member. It's basically like YouTube's own version of Patreon, except that it's easier for me to get paid. Also, you can like leave a super thanks on this video as well. And I really do appreciate everybody that supports me and helps me out a lot. But yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video, though, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.